Hey there, this is Mr. Weaver, and this is Unit 2, Lesson 9, Solving Problems About Proportional Relationships. After this lesson, you need to be able to ask questions about a situation to determine whether two quantities are in a proportional relationship, and be able to solve all kinds of problems involving proportional relationships. You'll know you're successful after this lesson if you can ask or think of appropriate questions needed to determine if two quantities are proportional and if you can solve problems involving proportional relationships. So first let's look at some strategies for solving these types of problems. First, determine the two quantities that you want to know about. So in a proportional relationship, there's two quantities. We have our input and our output. What do you want to know about? So in previous lessons, we looked at the number of items versus the cost or the weight versus how many items that was. Second step, create equations or tables and see how the two things are relating to each other. In proportional relationships, the equations are set up the same way every time, right? Y equals K times X. And then in the table, we can put all of our values in. Sometimes it's easier just to see what's happening if you put it in a table, especially if the problem's asking about, is this a proportional relationship? Okay, third, calculate your constants of proportionality. So any combinations of different quantities, calculate the constants of proportionality. And then also, you know, write that reciprocal equation. So remember, if it's a proportional relationship, it always has the same constant of proportionality, no matter that number of items. Let's look at an example of comparing two rates of people. Now. We need to figure out what the question's asking and how we'll approach that will depend on what we need to find out. So Diego practiced juggling his soccer ball for 20 minutes and in total, he touched the ball 600 times. Daniel practiced juggling his soccer ball for 25 minutes and touched the ball 125 times every five minutes. First one, who is juggling faster? So. Diego, we know that Diego had 600 touches in 20 minutes. So if I want to figure out how many touches he had every minute, I would do 600 divided by 20. That would tell me that his constant of proportionality is 30 touches per minute. Let's compare this to Daniel. So Daniel juggled for 25 minutes. He touched the ball. 125 times every five minutes. I want to figure out, in order to compare it to Diego, the touches per minute. Now, we need to be careful. There are two places in the problem that says minutes, 25 minutes and five minutes. Well, his rate that he is going is 125 times in five minutes. So we're going to do 125 divided by five. That tells us that Daniel is juggling at 25 touches per minute. If we wanted to write equations for these two, Diego's equation for touches, his touches would equal 30 times how many of her minutes he does it. And Daniel's touches would be 25 times how many of her minutes he juggles for. Next, who had more touches? So if we read back through, for Diego, it says right in the problem, he did it for 20 minutes and in total he touched the ball 600 times. So Diego had 600 touches. Daniel, on the other hand, doesn't tell us his total number of touches, but what it does tell us is his rate and then how long he did it for. For Daniel, using the same thing we just did, 
He touched the ball 125 times every five minutes, which was a 25 touches per minute. Well, he did that for 25 minutes. So we would multiply by 25 minutes. And we get our 625 touches. Had we just used our equation from the previous question, t equals 25m, we know that he's doing it for 25 minutes. 25 times 25, 625. So Daniel had more touches, even though Diego was going at a faster rate. In this lesson, we learned about constant rates. If we're dealing with constant rates, we're likely to have proportional relationships. So, for example, if a bird's flying at a constant speed, there's a proportional relationship between the time and the distance flow. If water is filling a tub at a constant rate, okay, there's a proportional relationship between the amount of water and the time the tub's been filling up. Regardless of the situation, if something's going at a constant rate, it's probably dealing with a proportional situation. If you're not sure if stuff represents a proportional situation, try writing an equation for it. Try making a table for it. If those situations don't work, it's probably not good for a proportional situation. If it does, you're probably dealing with a proportional relationship. Okay, setting an equation up is probably your best bet. Just like we were able to set up an equation for the number of touches they got after juggling the ball so many times per minute. We set the equation up. It helped uh, solidify that reasoning that our situation was a proportional relationship. So after this lesson, do you now know how to ask or think of appropriate questions that you might need to know to determine if two quantities are proportional? Okay, in our situation that we dealt with, we had to think about like, are we dealing with touches or the rate and so on? And do you know how to solve problems involving proportional relationships? If you're not comfortable with these things, go back and look at our strategies for solving problems and our example uh, with the juggling of the soccer ball to see if you can figure out and help solidify your understanding. And that's the end of lesson nine and using proportional relationships to solve problems.